Wouldn't it be great if you could get the perfect bass guitar sound using just three controls on your equalizer? What I'm going to help you learn today is how to set the low frequency, boost, and attenuation controls on the Pultec EQP1A equalizer, or any of its recreations or plug-in emulations on bass guitar. Here's the bass guitar clip I'm going to use. I'm going to treat the bass guitar as though it's a featured instrument in the mix. Instruments that are not specifically highlighted should always be EQ'd in the context of the rest of the instruments in the mix. But featured instruments need to sound great in themselves, and the other components of the mix will be shaped and crafted around them. This plugin emulation of the Pultec EQP1A is the Rultec EQ1A by Noise Ash, who describe it as being extremely accurate. I'm going to concentrate here on the low frequency controls, low frequency, boost, and attenuation. All of the other controls I'll leave at their zero settings. So this is a lesson on low frequency EQ alone. Before I begin, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And please leave a comment. You can just say hi, HI, so I know that you're watching and I can fine tune my videos so they are the best they can be for your needs. And if you like what you're seeing, click the like button. And if you don't like it, click the other one. It all helps me to help you to the best of my ability. Here's the original bass guitar clip again. I'll start by setting the low frequency control to 20 hertz. Then I'll increase the boost all the way up to full. The low frequency control is labeled CPS, which is cycles per second, but Hertz is the more modern term, so we're starting at 20 Hertz. By the way, whenever I compare the EQ in with the EQ out version, I'll adjust the levels so they both play back at the same level. Changing the EQ always changes the level of the signal, and any changes in level are very distracting, even for experienced engineers. So by matching the level, we can be sure that we're comparing like for like and just hearing the EQ. That doesn't make much of a difference, and you might not hear it at all if your speakers don't have a good low frequency response. But it is there, and it's worth considering. Let's hear it again. Now I'll do the same thing at the 30 hertz setting. You should hear more of a difference. Moving on to 60 Hz, this time I'll raise the boost to maximum and then back it off to a setting that I think sounds good.
I'll do the same for 100 Hz. You should be able to hear the difference clearly. So that's what the boost control can do. Now let's look at the attenuation control. It isn't common that you would need to reduce the bass on a bass guitar, but it can happen. Here I'm going to use a different clip where the bass guitar really is too bassy and it can make some loudspeakers rattle. Here it is. If it doesn't sound too bassy to you, then maybe your loudspeakers, headphones or earbuds don't have a good enough low frequency response to demonstrate the problem effectively. But on main monitors or large hi-fi loudspeakers, you will definitely hear too much bass. Here it is again. I'll go through each frequency setting in turn and raise the degree of attenuation from zero all the way to maximum. And now I'll choose the frequency setting that I like best and set the attenuation so that I feel it sounds right for the instrument. When I've done that, I'll switch the EQ in and out for comparison. Remember that every time I make a comparison, I'm matching the levels so you only hear the change in frequency balance.
It may seem odd, but you can use the boost and attenuation controls at the same time to get an interesting effect. It's sometimes known as the Pultec trick. What happens is that the boost control covers a relatively narrow range of frequencies, and the attenuation control covers a wider range of frequencies. So the attenuation control can make a kind of valley in which the boost control can make a hill. This can make the bass boost more defined, precise, and controllable. I'll go back to my original bass guitar clip. I'll play with the controls and find a setting that I like. And now I'll compare it with the setting I made previously using only the boost control. The Pultec trick is definitely useful, and it is in fact something you can emulate with conventional equalizers. So there you have it, the low frequency controls of the Pultec EQP-1A on bass guitar. You now know what the low frequency, boost, and attenuation controls do. And most importantly, you know what they sound like. And you understand the importance of comparing EQ in and EQ out at the same level. The next step is to download a plug-in emulation of the Pultec EQP-1A and try these sounds for yourself. It's only by making the adjustments yourself and allowing your brain to link the positions of the controls with what you hear that you will achieve the skills you need to EQ instruments effectively. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below and I'll try to reply to as many as I can. And if you like what you're seeing here, click the like button. If you don't like it, click the other one. It helps me to learn how I can help you to the best of my ability. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. I'm David Miller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. We offer a range of online courses to help home recording studio owners make fast progress on their journey to being able to make recordings of commercial release standards. It's great to learn on YouTube, but our courses will help you learn quickly, step by step, methodically, and missing nothing out. Click the link at the top of the description to visit the Audio Masterclass website and check out our range of courses. If you have any questions about our courses, click the contact link and send us a message. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment to tell me what you'd like me to cover in future. Thank you for listening.